We're going to talk about sort of like pulling things on strings like at the second station. Tomorrow we'll talk a little bit more about like cart on track falling down using the two things we learned from Atwood's machine and the poem. So that's kind of what we're going to do is figure out how to use math to analyze the two situations, two of the three situations from the lab. So that's kind of where we're going. The first one I want to look at is our Atwood's machine, which is our pulley system over in the back. We were using two pulleys to separate the masses. More generally, you'll almost always see people look at this as like a single pulley system. You'll see here is my pulley with my, my spokes, which are very much centered so beautifully. I have a string going up and around, and we always did this is a frictionless, massless string, so no friction in the pulley or the string at all, no masses to deal with. And I'm going to add two weights. I'm going to add a five kilogram mass, and I'm going to add a two kilogram mass. Kind of stagger them, they're easier to see. This is my setup. First things first, what will happen if I let go of these two masses? Zeta. It'll fall down on the side of the five kilogram. Excellent. The five kilogram is heavier than the two kilogram, so the five kilogram will be pulled downward, the two kilogram will move upward, and everyone kind of saw this in your Atwood machines last week. So if there's a heavier side, it will fall. If these were equal, it would stay at equilibrium. So we know that in the end, we have a result. And our result is that the acceleration of this guy, gonna have some acceleration downward, and this guy is gonna have some acceleration Upward. Do we know what that acceleration is right now? Eli? Um, well, each weight is going to be affected by the force due to gravity. Mm -hmm. So the, force due to this, the forces on the 5 kilogram one are going to be downwards in the direction of the force due to gravity, but upwards in the direction mm -hmm. of the 2 kilogram mass force due to gravity. All right, very well mm -hmm. said. So Eli said, well, this is not just the acceleration due to gravity. We know there is some acceleration due to gravity and some force of gravity, but this two kilogram weight is keeping it from free fall, right? We've talked before about free fall. This is not free fall because it's like being held back by the two kilogram weight. So Eli suggested there's probably something going on with like the, the force of gravity on the two kilogram weight that's affecting the system as a whole, right? Like something is going on, we're gonna need gravity for both of those things. To do a full analysis of this system, we want to learn a couple of things. We want to learn about the acceleration of both of these. Are they going to accelerate at the same rate, or are they going to be different? Same. Excellent. Yeah, same rate, right? Like there's no, like the string's not going slack or anything. It's going to be the same acceleration. One's just in the opposite direction from the other. And we also want to learn about all of the forces at play. Eli has already identified gravity. I'm going to call this one weight one, and call this one weight two. So we can denote them a little more clearly. That's a terrible one, so I'm rewrite that. So we can write that a little more clearly. So I have the, I'm not going to use the this part, it's bad. I'm going to throw away these stuff. I really like that one too, but like it's, it's the end of the line. She's, she's done. So we have the force to gravity. Of the first one, so I'm going to give, give it a little one so we know it's the first weight. Is the force due to gravity on my second one more, less, or the same? Seth? The same minus force. Uh, the same minus the force, the opposite of the one that's going to weigh more. Is it over now? No. I Same force due to gravity, but minus the force acting on the other side. Mm, okay, so you said two good things. We're going to take them step by step. First, you said it's the same force due to gravity. Is the same force, or is something else about gravity the same? Reese. Same acceleration, different force. Perfect, yeah. So the acceleration due to gravity is the same, which is what you're thinking of, Seth. The force is different because remember, the force due to gravity is mass times that value where this is our acceleration due to gravity, which we just call G. 
So Seth, absolutely right, same acceleration. The difference is that our force is different. So is the force from the two kilogram going to be more or less, Rose? Um, it's less. Yeah, because my mass is less. Perfect. So I'm just going to do a slightly smaller thing. Yes. Can I hypothesize about how we get acceleration? Please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because the the bigger the difference in the weights, the more um, the quicker it will accelerate, the more closely to gravity it would accelerate. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking in order to get the acceleration, we take gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second, and then multiply it by the fraction that is like bigger weight minus smaller weight over bigger weight. Bigger weight minus smaller weight over bigger weight. Okay, interesting. That's the mass. So, Rose, I'm going to add this to your first step on this. Is like m one plus m two over like that? Uh, uh, m one minus m two like that? Yeah, and that's deacceleration. Cool. I'm gonna keep that up there. There is a like long form algebra you may do this out. So we're just going to do like long form and see if we can get this. I actually, off the top of my head, don't know if this is true or not, um, just for the sake of transparency. Um, but let's find out. Because I, I totally, and the reason I say this is I'm following your reasoning, which seems very true, right? Like the more this uh, gets infinitely larger than this, the more infinitely close to gravity we get, right? So I see totally where you're going with this. So we should see, I'm trying to think in my head if the, if the algebra works out, and it might. So we're going to hold on to this. Um, and when we're done with the long algebra, we'll see if this is true. So, I like it. All right, so we've got my force due to gravity. This is where we kind of enter into territory that's a little bit uncharted. Like, this is kind of the newer stuff. So I have written out a handy-dandy solving force problems in 10 easy steps for all of you to follow. This works for tension, this works for friction, this works for spring force, we do that. This works for having a multitude of those things. Anytime you have a problem that deals with forces, you can apply this method. Today is also a handout every day, so just be aware of maybe like three or four different things. Many, many things. Yeah. So, solving force problems in 10 easy steps. I'm going to be going through all 10 steps as we solve our Atwood machine here. Step one is to draw a picture. All right, then. It does not have to be super artistic but it should accurately represent the problem and show you all of the moving parts of this system. In this case, our system is just everything that forces are acting upon in this section. So for example, in this section of your revolver machine, that would be a system. In this case, our system is our two masses, our pulley, everything here that is moving and forces are acting on, all part of the same system. Step two is to break down the problem. What are you being asked to find? What are you given? And what else do you know? It can be very helpful to go back to our handy dandy knowns and finds. We will go ahead and do that here. We have some stuff that is known. We have some stuff we want to find. What are some things we know in this problem? We've already gotten some arrows going, which is great. So we're kind of rocking and rolling. We'll start with our finds. We want to find the acceleration. Specifically, we want to find the acceleration of the first and the acceleration of the second, which we already said is the magnitude of those is the same, but the direction will be different. So just make sure we name that. So specifically, A1 and A2. Which will just be whatever this is with different signs. We also want to find our tension in the string. And this is sort of what we've all been kind of getting at when we've been talking about like that upward force that's kind of pulling on both of them, that the two is, is affecting. That force is our tension force. So we're going to, I'm actually going to do X sub T on this one. We know it's a force. So my force of tension is written like that. The tension force on an object is always the, you think of it as like the string that's pulling it back. So gravity is pulling down, 
my string is moving it up. Looking at my setup here, for the five kilogram mass, do you think the force of tension is going to be bigger than, less than, or equal to the force of gravity on the five kilogram mass? What do you think? Dee Dee, what do you think? Less because it's being pulled down. Fabulous, yeah. It's gonna be less because it's being pulled down. So my net force, the resulting force when I add everything together, has to be down, because that's how I'm accelerating. So my force of tension has to be lower. Great. I also have a force of tension here. One of the fundamental things about tension, and I'm gonna on this in just a second, is that the tension on either end of the same string is the same. So this tension is the same as this tension. And is this tension greater than, less than, or equal to this force of gravity? For my two kilogram block, is tension greater than, less than, or equal to rows? Yes, because it's already upward. Absolutely. So we know, so now we've got some like puzzle pieces. So let's go ahead and let's start writing down like our puzzle pieces. On Alex's side. Yes. Wait, so the force of tension is equal to force due to it's equal to a lot, and so for the five kilogram weight, it's equal to um, the force of gravity on the five. Kilogram. So it is, le it is less than the force of gravity because the net force is going down. Yes. So remember, our net force we do with like a fun little uh, vector addition. So I'm going to take my force of tension here, and I'm going to do a tip to tail on my force of tension. Bring a little force of tension. Add. That means my net force is going that way. Same thing for this guy. If I were to tip to tail, add gravity here. Come back here, tip to tail. I've right, got a net force in the upper direction. My scaling is a little wonky there. Yes. Yeah. So we know that we don't know what tension is yet. We just know it's got to be smaller than the force of gravity. And over here, it's got to be bigger than the force of gravity because I now have a net force down and a net force up. So some of my puzzle pieces. Puzzle piece number one is that the force of tension is equal on either side of the rope. So this FT and this FT are the same force. Very helpful puzzle. I'm going to add that to my knowns. That the force of tension is equal to the force of tension on either side. I have another puzzle piece, which tells me that F net 1 is down, and F net 2 is up. That might be useful. So this one is two, and this one is one. Oh, I flipped the one. I was doing this in the last class too, but there was one time I just like halfway through flipped them entirely, and then, all right, so last way. This is right though. Better right here. Okay, so that's okay. great. So now let's think about what this mysterious tension thing I keep mentioning. I have another lovely hand. Let's look at the friction one I gave you guys a few weeks ago. This is a nice little brief explainer. I just asked if you don't check out the back page yet because spoilers for our next problem. But we'll talk about the front page now. Are you keeping it on the pop quiz? Um, yeah. Okay, perfect. as the action-reaction pair of forces acting at each end of seven elements. 
Basically, tension is a force that results from something being pulled by a string or a string-like object. So anytime something is pulled, there is a tension force. We're going to denote the force of tension with an F sub T, just like the way friction was an F sub F. You'll notice that my friction Fs were lowercase and this tension T is capitalized. That's just sort of like nomenclature. You're welcome to keep them consistent. Um, and you will see both. This is where nomenclature gets a little, little dicey. Sometimes people go totally rogue and just say force of tension is a big T and it's terrible. So just be aware that you might see other symbols as we go. I will be using F sub T. You can see here some examples of tension. We have our Atwood machine style tension in number one, which is like there's gravity down and tension up. You can also have multiple strings with their own tensions. And you can have multiple objects connected by a string, either in a line or by an Atwood machine or something like that. This bottom part, or Newton's laws, is about to become very, very important. So I'll sort of leave that hanging in the balance. Number three in my solving force problem with heavy these steps says to draw a free body diagram for each body in the system and or the system as a whole. In this case, the system as a whole is not super useful. It's not like everything's moving in one direction. Everything's kind of separate. But I do want to go ahead and get some free body diagrams down for both of my masses. So I have my five kilogram. And I have my two kilogram. And I've kind of been building these diagrams over there. Well, let's go ahead and do them on their own, just so we can see them super well. What are all of the forces acting on my five kilogram mass? Or what is one of the forces acting on my five kilogram mass? Gravity. Excellent. Force of gravity. And we'll keep with our one and twos here. What is the other force acting on my five kilogram mass? Grease. Tension, absolutely, thank you. And that is pointing in the upward direction. Similarly, I have the same two forces for my two kilogram mass. I just have a smaller gravity and the same tension. One curvy line. There we go. We saw over here that I know, based off of how this thing is moving and which side is moving where, that I can make some inferences about my net force, right? F net one is downward, F net two is upward. So I know some stuff about F net right off the bat. I also know two more very important things about FNet, and that's in number four and five on the handout. The first thing I know is from Newton's second law. What is Newton's second law? Do you remember it? So many Newton's laws. Newton's second law is perhaps the shortest of Newton's laws. Ramon? It's not every action. That's number three. Also a good one, though. Also important for this. I know we're just like knocking out laws now. Yeah, Phoebe? Uh, F equals M. Beautiful. F equals M A. Every force is equal to some mass times acceleration. This is very, very useful because it means that F net is equal to M A. F net one is M one A one. And F net 2 is F2 A2. And we know that these accelerations are really the same thing. And we know the masses because we've been given them. So F net 1 is equal to my mass of this, which is just 5, times whatever my acceleration is. And I don't know that yet, but that's fine. F net 2 equal to my mass of the second block, which I know is 2, times whatever my acceleration is, which I don't know yet, but I will see. It's just Newton's laws. So whatever that acceleration is, I don't know what it is yet. F net has to be MA for both of them. Any questions on this step? I 
with my application of Newton's law. Anyways. The other thing I know about FNet is the vector addition we did over here. I know that if I add my vectors together, what I'm left with is Fnet. That's like the definition of net force. It's just add up all the forces, and what you're left with is net force. So in this case, I think Ft1, I subtract Ft, and I'm left with Fnet1. In this case, Ft is bigger, so I think Ft and I subtract Ft2, and I'm left with F net 2. So in addition to this and this, I have a little bit more knowledge, which is that F net 1 is equal to whatever the force of gravity is, minus whatever the tension is. Same thing over here, whatever F net 2 is, it is equal to, in this case, the force of tension, which is the bigger one, minus the force of gravity, which is the smaller one. Does everyone see how we get there? E uh, wouldn't it be just in terms of it actually doesn't matter. Um, but the main question was, um, how does that normal force play into this? Like, is that what? Great question. So, normal force is like if you are at, if you're sitting on a surface, normal force is like the force of the table back up, right? Yeah, this doesn't have anything to do with Exactly. Yeah. So, because we're hanging, there's no normal force. Normal force is if you're like sitting on a surface. Good question. In this case, our opposing force is tension. Mm -hmm. So the thing that keeps us out of free fall, just like if you're on a table, you're out of free fall because of thermal force. In this case, you're out of free fall because of tension holding you back. Good question. Seth? Is there a functional difference between, or like, is there a reason to use one or the other? Like, um, can net force through mass as a similar to gravity or just adding up the numbers? Seth, you are to something, my friend, because there is absolutely no functional difference at all. In fact, there's no difference at all. This F net is exactly the same as this F net. And this F net is exactly the same as this F net. Those boxed quantities are in every way, shape, and form the same. They're both F net. It is by two different ways of representing the same quantity, which means these two things are equal, and these two things are equal, which is deeply powerful, and it is the next piece of my puzzle. So puzzle piece number, I'm gonna do color for this. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do deceleration for this. Puzzle piece number three says, F net one, is equal to five and okay. so many colors. All right, stay tuned for colors. F net one equals five A. And F net one equals F G one minus F T. I'm just copying over what's on the other board. So it's over in my puzzle piece section. Similarly, I'm going to copy over my other stuff, which is F net 2 equals 2A and F net 2 equals F G2 F T. Thank you. Oh my god, thank you. This is where I this is where I did the last class and they just started all messed up. Wait, I was Yes. Oh, this, I didn't want to say this because I don't want to do it again. No, no, no. Is it but if like if FG2 was like really huge, wouldn't just in terms of directionality, isn't it FG2 minus FT? Isn't it FG2 minus FT? 
Um, so if fg2 were bigger than ft, it would be. We know ft is bigger because we know in this system the two moves upward. Okay. Great question. So if this were like eight kilograms, it would move downward. This would be bigger, and we have a this situation. So with an application, you're always going to have these two quantities interplaying with one another. Yeah. Which direction is in just depends on which one moves up and which one moves down. It's just a negative sign flipping based off of which one is the, the more uh, at play for it. Whether tension is winning or gravity is winning. Great question. Rose. Is that something we have to do like, manually? Like is that not built into the formula we use? Like it seems weird to switch them based on whichever is larger if that's something that we would have to do. So what we're really doing here is looking at our vector addition, right? So we're looking at, at essentially negative signs. The reason I do it this way is because it keeps your negative signs straight. So this would, in this case, what we're basically doing is accounting for the fact that, I'm gonna draw a picture. This is gonna be really good, hang on. I'm gonna draw a picture. So imagine I take these, and I open them up off of my pulley. Thank you. Oh my gosh, anything? Pulley. So I'm gonna like unfold this. When I unfold this, what I end up with is a five kilogram weight and a two kilogram weight. And they are connected by my strength. I've just, whoop. one of my forces of gravity, the five kilogram one, if I were to unfold, gravity would be acting in this direction. Here, when I unfold, gravity is working in this direction. And my tensions are pointing in the opposite direction of one another. They're equal and opposite. So what this really is, is accounting for the fact that my tensions are pointing in opposite directions and my gravities are pointing in opposite directions. It doesn't look like it because we're hung over the pulley, but if we were to unfold, we could see, oh, this is negative, this is positive, and vice versa. So that's where those signs come from. And force and tensions are the same? Yes, equal and opposite. Same force, different direction. D. I know that we talked about the like net force being positive on the five kilogram, but because of like directionality, like is that just not reflected in net force? Yeah. So the it just depends on where you define positive. So they're up. So in this case, we want down to be negative. This would be negative, and this would be positive, okay. which is why I use downward and upward instead of negative and positive. Okay. So you would just similar to the other problems we've been doing with friction and stuff. You pick your direction, and at the end of the problem, just make sure your negatives are negative, your positive are positive. And if you're consistent with those, it works out nicely. Um, with outward machines, it's especially tricky because of this like unfolding effect here. So where it looks like both of these gravities have the same sign, your signs get a little wonky because they're both pointing down, so you want them to both be downward, but they're actually in yeah. opposite directions. So things get a little crazy with outward machines, which is why I think it's like unfolding to be helpful. Excellent questions. Other questions before you move on? Fabulous. So now we are here, which is a very cool place to be. How many unknowns are in my little step three puzzle piece? How many of these things do I not know? Rose. Four things. Four things, what are they? Acceleration, mm -hmm. force due to gravity mm -hmm. one, force due to gravity two, force of tension. Yes. That is too many things for me to solve this problem. That's like, we've kind of established, we really need to have like one or maybe two unknowns to solve the problem. What can I do about this absolute crisis? What can I do, Rose? You can figure out the force due to gravities. Excellent. Yes, I can figure out my force due to gravities. So I really know Fg1 and Fg2. How can I figure out the force due to gravity of these two objects? 
How can I figure that out? Zena. Multiplier mass is by 9.8. So this is going to be 5 times 9.8, and this is going to be equals 2 times 9.8, which is, ooh, let me do math in my head. Um, I'm, do you want, I'm going to leave signs off for now. Thank you. And this is just 19.6. So, the way I have it lined out here with my signs, we are assuming, because of my negatives, that gravity points down, tension points up. If you want to unfold, you can. Just be careful about your signs, right? In terms of like, I baked that in down here with these minuses. So I just want to be careful that I'm not like over hedging my stuff. Like I got my minuses down here because of my vector addition. If you want to just add all the forces and add in directions as negatives, you can unfold. I'm gonna continue down this path, but know that this is perfectly viable. Your signs are just gonna be a little shaken up, but you will get the same answer. So if you're, you are in camp unfold, by all means do it. And if anyone's interested, I'm happy to walk you through that uh, at a later date and just sort of like do the comparison. But for now, my forces of gravity in this model are both pointing down, so I'm going to give them both negative signs, just for the sake of consistency. And again, when we unfold these, that's kind of like a false equivalency, but in this model, I need those negative signs. So, this is a little smushed. It's fine. Negative 49 for this FG, and negative 19.6 for that FG. So my fourth piece of the puzzle and my final piece of the puzzle, the FG1, is equal to negative 49 newtons, and FG2, negative 19.6 newtons. So now, I only have two unknowns. I don't know A and I don't know T, but I do know algebra, and that is just as good as knowing either one. So, let's plug these in and see where we're at. I'm just going to do it like on, on the thing. FG1 is negative 49. FG2 is negative 19.6. I said before that these two things, these two F nets for 1 and 2, are the same. And I was not lying. Tis a true fact. Which means, I'm going to go swing up here. For F net 1, this is equal to this. 5A. I'm going to do all the colors. 5A equals. It's a systems of equations. Yes, it is, Rose. Everyone, summon yourselves back to doing systems of equations in not marine science or marine science. One of those classes, systems of equations, linear programming, all of it's connected. It's all coming back to us. The other one, 2A, equals so many colors. FT. Minus negative 19.6. And this is, of course, a system of equations. Look at that. How do we solve the system of equations? Who can recall the forgotten math of your elders? Eli. Um, you try to, you can take one and try to put um, FT on one side, and then when you figure out the value of FT, you can add it, you can submit that into the other equation, so you can say like 2A equals something, 5A, something 49. Beautiful. I want to get each of these to have only one unknown on the left and only one unknown on the right. So I want this to look kind of like a Y equals blah 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 X stuff. 
and then I can solve them a little bit more fully. So I'm going to, so I'm, I'm seeing this, this will like go back to the thought process, and I'm seeing, okay, well there's already an A over here, but to get the A by itself, I have to divide by five, and I hate division. I'm just like personally, anytime I see a fraction, I'm like, I would rather not. So instead of dealing with a fraction, I'm gonna get the FT on its own, and that's gonna like make my life a little bit easier, I think. So I'm gonna, this is subtracted, so I'm gonna add that P to both sides here. And I'll get 5a minus fp. And I'm going to keep the 5a away, so I'll just go ahead and do that right away. Subtract the 5a from both sides. There's an a there, I'm just doing color coded. And when I do all of that, I get my fp alone. And it's an fp equals negative 49 minus 5a. Algebra, amazing, beautiful. If I am subtracting a negative number, I am secretly adding that number. Everyone agree? Negatives, amazing. So this one's a little bit easier. I'll do a subtract from 18.6. Negative 49 minus 5 And what I have up here is 2a, or we'll do we'll do FT on the other side, so it makes it even. FT equals. 2a minus 19.6. Beautiful. What do I do now? Now I've got some ft equal stuff. This is my next step to solve this system of equations, rows. Excellent. I now know that this and this are equivalent. Since Ft equals Ft, I have the stuff in my box is equal between negative 49 minus 5a. Equal, I'm going to abandon the colors here, we'll see other comments. Equals 2. A minus 19.6. Ooh, wee. Beautiful. And now I just do algebra to get A by itself. Okay. So, what am I going to do first? I don't want this to be negative, so I'm going to bump that 5A over. Um, it's, it's very aesthetically pleasing. 
Uh, A1 is going down. Let's go ahead and make that negative. So this is going to be negative 4.2. A2 is going up. We'll make that positive. And so then it's going up positive 4.2. If I want both of them like this, I'll tell you, I'll never be like, give me the accelerations. Ha ha, sight, you forgot the negative sign. Um, generally, it's a good idea to write both out just so you have it if you need to do something else with the problem later. Um, but I'll clarify if I ever want you to give me, you know, which of these three exercises. Now we can find the tension. How do we find the tension off of all this? How can I find the tension? The tension in the room is complicated. Rose. You can plug in A into one of the equations. Beautiful. Try extension. And I'm just going to plug in A into one of the equations. Um, I'll make this one because fewer negatives, why not? So x equals 2a minus 19.6. x equals 2 acceleration 4.2. And remember, same thing, tension is the same, but the signs are flipped. So one of them will be positive, one will be negative. So we can just assign that negative sign at the end. Minus 19.6. Minus 19.6. Minus 19.6. Minus 19.6. Wait, the 19.6, this, this is fine. So 19.6, we can get the sign right away if we want to. 19.6 um, is the 2 kilogram, which means tension is going to be going that, oh, I can't. It's 30. Yes. I just wanted to go ahead and get the sign and not write off that. Um, it's not 30. Is this? That's right. Yeah. So for the 19.6, which is this one, I get positive acceleration. So this needs to be positive. It's like what I was getting at, right? It's 27. So this stays positive. It's 28. No. 30. It's 28. Why are you for that? It's, it's not, it's 11.2. So we, well, we can also reason this out, because let's say, because the, because it's the way we've defined oh, acceleration, way. right? So the way we've defined this, we know that the force of tension needs to be bigger than Fg2. So this needs to be bigger than this. So this does need to be negative, right? Confirmed? Yeah. Beautiful. <clears throat> negative. 28. No one said negative 28. Did someone say negative 28? I said negative. Okay. She said negative. She said negative. She said negative. She said negative. So it still wouldn't be 38. I said negative. I said it was positive. I was lying. I forgot about which way I defined things. So close. Yeah. Tension. Bad. Um, because, so I said it was going to be positive, forgetting that when we unfold sides. Anyway. There you go. Which also makes sense because negative 28 newtons right over here means that you're still falling downward with the correct acceleration. Yeah. All right. So six, seven, eight, we did all at once. That was just sort of the steps I went through on the board. Number nine says check your S with logic. That is exactly what I just did when I was like, ooh, is this going to be the smaller number or the bigger number? Let's think about this. Um, so that is what you want to do there. Um, you can also often with problems like these do like a full check your work situation depending on uh, what the problem gives you. In this case, we can go back to our F nets and just make sure that everything calculates out properly, right? So we know what A is, we know what F key is, and we can go backwards from there. So here we get negative 4.2, plug it back in, all of, the, all of the systems of equations work out properly. And logically we know that that means my five is falling and my two is rising. So that's my logic check at the end. And step 10 is to celebrate. Hurrah. Huzzah. All right. That is the after machine. What questions do you all have about that? Now that was a full hour of a single physics problem. Talking about come into play in terms of just knowing that F net stuff, 
This is your key to pretty much any tension problem. It's just going to be using F net to your advantage and remembering that F net can be expressed both as MA and as the combination of forces. When you're doing any kind of force evaluation, this is going to be very important to remember. Um, and often, F net can, can shortcut you a little bit in the problems, and we'll see that in our next example. We flip the page on the back. Note that the forces are only equal and opposites. You only have the same FT here if they are on the same string. If there is more than one string attached to the object, all bets are off. It might be the same, it might be different. Uh, we don't know. Some things you will know about them is you can always think about is the object in motion or at rest? If the object is stationary, that means it's in equilibrium. We will talk about angle ropes and tensions probably beginning of next week, maybe end of this week, depends on how like Zoom school goes tomorrow and things like that. Um, and it just involves, as always, trig and angly things. Um, but in, for the most part, especially over the next couple of days, we will be seeing pretty linear stuff. Um, this is probably the hardest thing we'll see over the next couple of days, is the Apple machine. Um, but I think it does a really nice job of outlining all of the steps of like equivalent forces and stuff like that, because I was part of it. You all also have some homework to do for me. I'll go ahead and pass that now that I just forgot the last class, right there, right here. Um, this is due on Wednesday, so you have tomorrow to do it as well. Um, it's just one page, it's another Atwood machine. This time it's eight and five kilograms. Um, it asks you to do the same thing, tension and acceleration. There's also a really fun problem at the end where it also asks you to repeat this if you are on Saturn. So just changing the acceleration to gravity and seeing what that does, which is quite fun. So this is, again, no need to have it done by uh, online school tomorrow. Just make sure you give it back to me on Wednesday, please. And that should give us some active mission practice. And I'll post a digital copy to Etsy as always. Um, does someone have a phone on them? This is not a gotcha question, I promise. Okay. Can someone grab a picture of the board for me? Just see if my phone is currently being you know used as any camera. A little bit too, actually. Sorry. Thank you. Perfect. High definition. Yeah, I don't need to get to high definition. Um, and we can go ahead and let's check Rose's hypothesis. Um, I think we're going to be a little off. It's just not right. And one minus it's going to be three over five. It would be more than four point. Yeah. Four point nine. Right. What are the forces? So. Wait, but is it two over? Probably not. I don't think so. Because I was thinking we can get to seven over two, maybe, but he's not there. But I like I like the hustle. <laughs> oh, it, it was a very good hypothesis, and you're not super far off, right? Like if you do seven over two, like if you just make this division, it's pretty darn close, um, but not quite. Class, um, as my father used to say, close only counts in horseshoes and All right, so it's like a very old person. What is, I get the hand grenades, what is horseshoes? Horseshoes is the game, like, 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 like when you play like horseshoes, oh. if you get it in the sand pit, you still get points. Yeah. I was thinking that yeah. much like the sand pit, like you throw a hand grenade. It's close. He's laughing. That's funny. Yeah. 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 Wait, so is hand cool. grenades yeah. also a game, or are they talking no. about no, if you get close? No, it's not close. Obviously, angles get tricky, but the Atwood machine has like a lot of moving pieces. 
Most tension problems are going to be able to sort of find some shortcuts that will be very helpful. Um, one of these you can find on the back of the tension handout. Um, I'm just going to walk us through this like beautiful little present problem. But this one is done fully on your handout, so you can just pay attention uh, while I'm walking through it and not have to worry about keeping as many notes. So, in this case, we don't have anything hanging. We just have a lovely little three present line. It's a line of three presents. They are green and pink and orange. And they are three, seven, fifty. So, I do green present, which is three kilograms. I have a pink present, which is seven kilograms. And then I have an orange present, which is 15 kilograms. Well, many kilograms. These are, of course, all attached by a string. Two strings. String one, string two. And they are being pulled with an applied force, we call this F applied, of 50 newtons. So it might be pulled, some of them just like need to grab the first one and make it. So like we don't have to worry about any kind of string here. There's just some 50 newtons being applied in that direction. That's the gist here. My questions for this one are the same. What is the tension and what is the acceleration of the presence as a whole? One thing to remember with this problem is that what we said earlier about the equal and opposite tensions only being true when it's about the same rope. So with two ropes, I have two different tensions to keep track of. So my first tension to keep track of is right here. I have an equal opposite tension on this pair. And I have a separate equal opposite tension on this pair. Voila. I also have my applied force, which is a little bit different than my Atlas machine. We assume that there is no friction for this problem. Um, we will add friction in pretty soon. Like, I, I think of one of our challenge problems tomorrow, we'll start to like think about friction, um, which is very fun to do and like relatively straightforward, so it's nice. So let's go through step by step our how to solve problems in Power Money 86. So draw a picture. Beautiful. Break down the problem. Let's figure out our knowns and our finds. In this case, known. Uh, what are my knowns and finds? What are the things I want to find? Let's start there. What do I want to find in this problem? I just want to find the yeah, the potential of the acceleration. Oh no, well, yeah, you want to find the force of attention of both strings. Right? Yeah, I want to find this uh, blue tension here. I also want to find this green tension in here. So I've got my two tensions. And just for kicks, I also want to find the acceleration. So I've got a pink present, I'll use red this time for acceleration. Oh, that was my fine, it's not my gnomes. I'm just gonna flip those. Just got excited. There we go. What are some things I know about this system? What are some things that are given? What are some things that I know? Seth. I know all three masses. I know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go one, two, three. Uh, in terms of naming stuff, I'll go down. One, two, three. So I know that M1 equals three. I know that M2 is equal to seven. And I know that M3 is 15. What is the other piece of information that I'm given? It's 
and say, what's the biggest information I'm getting here? I've got my taxes, I'm trying to find my pensions, what am I given? What's the other thing I can do? Excellent, yeah, I did an applied course of 50 newtons. I was pulling all of my presents. Great. What about gravity? Am I concerned with gravity right now? D. I don't know if you're hearing that. The, the force that's like pushing the, ta the table. Okay. It's pushing up and, and gravity is pushing down and they cancel out because it's not falling down. Beautiful. Yeah, gravity still exists. I mean, I'm bigger for this one, maybe bigger for this one. But I'm not moving in the y direction. My normal force, as Edie said, the table is pushing back with the equal, equal opposite force. Okay. Which means that in the y direction, it's kind of a wash. So like, yes, there's gravity. Yes, I could calculate it. If I had something like friction, I would need to calculate it. But for this friction of the surface, it's good to know they're there. I just don't need them right now. All I care about is my x and y direction, so with frictionless surface, don't need gravity. If I were to so assume this is a real situation, I'm here at my post office, here's my, you know, my present train, and I'm grabbing my present train, and I'm going to pull my presence behind me with a 50 newton applied force. What is the weight I am pulling with my 50 newton applied force? What is the total mass I'm pulling? when I pull this train of presence. What does it feel like to me? Do I just feel the 15 BB? You feel a pen more intense than Excellent. When I'm actually pulling this, I pull it as one system. It's like, sure, there are some, you know, strings, but I assume the strings are massless. All I'm feeling it's like if I had one giant present that was, we'll do M total. And M total is going to be M1, M2, and M3. So, what is my total mass? Zena? 25 kilograms. 25 kilograms, excellent. So if I were pulling these presents with my 50 newton applied force, I don't care if it's one giant 25 kilogram present, if it's two smaller presents, it's off. For me, this is just like saying I'm pulling 25 kilograms of stuff. There's other stuff going on, but for me it's what I feel. This is what we're referring to as the total mass. And this is where we start caring about the systems thing on our force handout. There's a system I'm working with, and in that system, there's an applied force acting on the whole thing. So I can treat this blob as like one 25 kilogram blob. And my one 25 kilogram blob has a 50 newton applied force acting on it. And it also has its own gravity and stuff like that, but again, those are just going to cancel each other out. They're not going to matter for this. We have an Fg, we have an Mn, we just don't care about them all that much. This is a way better one here. What is the net force on my whole system? So F net system. What is the net force on my system? In the x direction. What are all the forces in the x direction on my system set? Um, yeah, it's just the to you. It's just the applied force. It's just me hauling my resin across the post office. We know that F net system has our two definitions. We know that it's the addition of all of the forces. We know that it's F applied. And in this case, just F applied. There's no other force going on here. And we know that F net system is equal to MA. 
So it's going to be m total times a. And I suddenly know a lot of things, right? I can do my this f net equals this f net. I know m total is 25. You can say m total is so. I don't know a yet. But I know that my applied force is 50. So I can set my two box things equal to each other. And I get that 25a equals 50. Can I solve for a? Yes. 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 What is a? I know those are What is a? Two. Excellent. So I don't even need to think about tension in this case to find acceleration. It's just two. Is the acceleration the same for each individual present and for the whole system? Yes. I see some like tepid knots. Yes. Yeah. So nothing's gonna be like, you know, accelerating faster and like the strings are going slack and like we're, everything's accelerating the same thing. So the acceleration for the whole system is two. The acceleration for this is two. The acceleration for this is two, and the acceleration for this is also two. So I've already got my acceleration just by looking at the whole system. So this is why considering the whole system can be very, very helpful. To find my tension, I'm like rapidly running this time. Am I? Do I have fun this time? I don't know. You, it's, it's one more. Oh, we're fine. You have 20 minutes. I thought we had six minutes. And I was very excited. Great. That's right. So we have acceleration. Now we want to find our two tensions. We've got to fill this in. Two meters per second squared. Great. So I've got my free body diagram for the whole system. Let's go ahead and build out some free body diagrams for each component of the system. I'm going to start with my three, then we'll move on to my seven. See what I can find. Here is my three. Here is my seven. I'm going to put my 15 over here because my F applies. We have already said several times that while gravity exists, we're just not that interested in. I'm going to toss them in. Whenever you do a free body diagram, you want to include all the forces, even the ones you don't need. We're just not going to spend a lot of time talking about them because we don't need them. But there they are, nonetheless. Um, I do not particularly care if you scale these. If you're like, oh, this normal force is going to be, you know, like this, these two vectors have to be bigger than these, and they have to be like smaller than the tension. If I care, I will tell you to scale everything. In general, as long as your equal and opposites are indeed equal, that's it. So like, I'm gonna make these little baby arrows. It's fine, because we don't need them. What other forces are acting on my uh, three block? Reese. shakes some nose. Delightful. There's nothing I like more than something with only one force acting on it. It's like with the system. We love, we love a one force item. It's great. Very easy to do if we love it. What about our seven? What are the forces acting on my seven kilogram block? In the x direction specifically. Eli. Um, the two dimension string one and string two. Right. I've got my green tension going that way. I've got my need to go tension going that way. Beautiful. Do we know which of these is bigger? I'm going to rephrase that. I'm trying to work on my hypothetical questions, of which I ask many. One of these is bigger. Which one is it? There we go. Yeah, it's the purple one because it's moving towards the right. Great. Perfect. We know that it's moving toward the right, which means net forces to the right, so we know that our like purpley indigo one needs to be there. Excellent. And for my 15 down here, what are my two forces? Seth? Indigo tension and 
and the applied force. Excellent. I love a good one force item, so let's go ahead and start with that three. Only one force acting on it, which is of course the force of tension. Which means my net force has my two meanings. Meaning number one is an M times A. M times, oh, it's so impressive, look at that. Wow. It's also the sum of all the forces acting in the X direction. What is the only force acting in the X direction? Yep, go for us, thank you. The only X direction force I have here is tension. Very exciting. Which means that this Fnet and this Fnet are the same. This is Fnet. And I can set those equal to each other. I know the mass. It's three. I know the acceleration, because I just figured it out. It's two. The only thing I don't know here is the tension. And I don't even have to do algebra here. I just have to do math. Six equals that half. We love a one force item. So good. We know this is six here. Amazing, beautiful, stunning. Now I'm going to write F nets for my seven block. Same deal. F net two is equal to the mass of the second one times the acceleration. Slightly more things to consider here. I have still this tension force, and again, this is where we consider our signs. This tension force is in the positive direction. It's also going to be bigger. I'm going to have my indigo tension force minus, because it's in the negative direction, my green tension force. I know that this F net and this F net are equal. And I know a bunch of stuff. I know M is 7. I know A is 2. I don't know my indigo tension yet. I do know my green tension, however. It is 6. I just figured out. Oh, that's a way very green. So I have here that 7 times 2 is 14 equals Ft minus 6. And again, I don't even have to really do algebra here. I can just do addition to find that Ft equals 14 plus 6, which is 1. Which means all of the things I want to find have been found. I didn't even need my 15. Didn't even need it. As far as checking goes, this is a nice situation which I have this extra guy. I could use this to check my work, especially for the, that indigo tension, by doing my net forces and my net A, and hopefully I would get the same answer. And you can see that check done out on the handout when we do this one out. So I was curious, this is a great space for you to check your work, is if you have an extra item and haven't used yet. Awesome. Questions on that? So a bit more straightforward than our packet machine there. Questions on that? All right. We have just about 10 minutes left. It's good timing. And I want you all to do an example problem. I'll give you about seven minutes, and we'll go over it quickly together. Um, it's going to look a lot like this one, just with two presents in a slightly different form. So, uh, 
Yes, that's a one. I tried to give it a little. Whenever I have a little base there, that's usually what that is. Two more minutes, and we'll go over it together.
set through our solving force problems. Step one, draw a picture. Beautiful, stunning, wonderful, gorgeous. Break down the problem. Let's get some knowns and finds on the board. Knowns. Find. First things first, I know how to find the force of tension and the acceleration. I'm going to start there. So, I know how to find force of tension. There's only one tension force here in this rope. We don't know. The same thing might be a rope. It might be someone yanking. We don't know. The only rope we care about is this one right here. So, if I'm fine, I'm going to force of tension. But I also want to find my acceleration. What do I know? What are some known things here that might be helpful to me? D. I know M1 is 2. Excellent. I know M1 is 2. I know M2 is 1. That's fine. Should have flipped those. It's fine.
and my only net worth, only piece of my net worth here is pension. I know that this net force and this net force are equal, meaning F T is equal to 2 times 10. Simplifying, simplifying to 30 newtons. Voila! Same thing, net forces, MA, and add them all together. Gives us. Are we adding and not subtracting? Sorry? Oh, this is 20. This is 20. 2 times 10 is not 30. There you go. 2 times 10 is 30. Math. Confirmed. Lovely. So with this one, back here, we will have this. In this one, you would. Well, you get the same thing. Oh, yes. Okay. And it's just one pension. Pension is equal to I thought I did it wrong. So you only have to do it wrong, which is great. All right. I know today was a lot of board work. Tomorrow, we're doing a lot more sort of problems, applications, using this a bit more, practicing a bit more. Homework due on Wednesday, lab report due on Friday. Thank you all for your attention. And I will see you all digitally tomorrow. Have a lovely rest of your day, y'all. Do we have planets right now? We have planets next. No, time is for two is planets. What's the